Hello, I'm David Phillips from the University of Toronto, but I'm speaking to you from the comfort and safety of my own home. Uh, I've been exploring lately the interrelations among uh, public space, surveillance, practice, and identity play. Uh, I'm using a Goffman-esque notion of identity as the performing of socially meaningful relationships. Identity is negotiated, and what's being negotiated is a position in a structure of meaning and rights and power. Now, those negotiations occur in space. They occur in social settings. Uh, this is important for three reasons, at least. First, it's the spatial arrangements uh, that affect structure, the affordances of visibility and co-presence uh, that mediate this identity negotiation. Uh, second, the social settings carry certain expectations of appropriate actions and exchanges. There are certain roles and relations that are easier to sustain in certain places. Uh, finally, as John McGrath says, space is the fundamental subjective condition of perception, of knowing and understanding the external world. Now, of course, uh, spaces, places, and settings, uh, they are themselves negotiated and created along with performances uh, that they support. Uh, space is produced by the action it mediates. And so my project starts with this recursive co-construction of identity and space. And what I want to examine is how that co-construction occurs, what resources are drawn upon, by whom, and to what end, and what are the possibilities in that co-construction for non-normative identity identities or for generative, democratic, public places. Now, I suggest that this uh, co-construction process is being shaped by two historical uh, trends. The first is the increasing institutionalization of surveillance practice or, or of uh, actuarial ways of knowing. The second is the overlaying and intermeshing of data space and physical space uh, through, for lack of a better term, ubiquitous computing. How do we understand uh, our street and our place there uh, when we're simultaneously walking down it and reading about it on Google Earth? Uh, when, where, and with whom does an interaction occur when that's being recorded on a webcam? Uh, so these are big questions, and, and they're messy things to consider, but, but I want to lay out at least uh, three points of entry into that mess that, that might lead to some kind of coherent understanding of, of the tensions, the pressures, the interests, and the tactics, uh, the resources involved. Um, the first kind of messy interaction uh, are unexpected border crossings. Uh, these occur when something you thought was occurring in one type of space actually bleeds into another. Your boss read Facebook. Um, that video of, of yourself performing those grotesqueries on chat roulette, it's on chat maps now with a pinpoint to your street. Um, uh, and here also I might mention that you are honor bound to ignore anything behind me that might actually be inappropriate to display in this now public setting. Now, uh, the second uh, type of messiness is simultaneous but differential occupations of, of the same space, if you will. Uh, children playing on webkins online, they're, they're subjectively in a very different world than the webkins operators and are. Uh, those performances, the same performance, uh, is subject to wildly different interpretations, and, and those interpretations are, are kept carefully and structurally segregated. And, and the third kind of messiness is the co-structuring of physical and data spaces. Plazas are designed to facilitate camera surveillance. Regions are planned and zoned and built based on an actuarial, informationalized understanding of the kinds of embodied interactions that are uh, expected to occur there. In addition to these uh, messy interactions uh, among spaces, we also have to look at the uh, messy uh, trans-institutional infrastructures that mediate those spaces, the telecom companies that provide the channels through which data flows, the data brokers that are collecting and selling raw material for actuarial sense-making, uh, the marketers of the culture industry that are interested in managing the control of consumption, and of course the police and security organizations that are interested in everything. Uh, and these are not analytically or practically separable. 
So what do we do uh, it, to gain some kind of useful working knowledge of this model? Well, first, we remember the main point. Uh, it's the mutual co-construction of identity and space in an age of uh, surveillance and ubiquitous computing. And I suggest we look at case studies of uh, where that co-construction is occurring. Where are these notions of space, place, uh, presence, and identity being played with? And how is that play being structured? With what resources and to what end? Now, I've been looking at uh, mobile social media like Foursquare, also at transmedia uh, industrial cultural production, by which I mean ad campaigns that incorporate um, interactive gaming with physical sites like billboards and also with fictional TV cameras to create this new kind of space. Um, and uh, finally, transmedia art projects, which are actually very like the transmedia ad campaigns, but with very different ends, very different motivations, and very different um, economic structures. Now, hopefully, these will provide interesting points of convergence and divergence uh, among the axes that I've mentioned, interesting conflicts between ways of knowing, ways of occupying space, ways of interacting with others, uh, ways of understanding one's place in the world, and, and ways of integrating the various interested institutionalized actors. And that, from where I sit, is the future of social science on and with digital media. Stop.